So when you say Ghazali's Ihya Ulum al-Din, Ghazali's revival of the religious sciences, you really mean a synthesis of the first five centuries of Islamic thought. Ghazali brings together the different sciences of theology, law, ethics, scripture, and uh, organizes them and elaborates upon his predecessors in a masterful and beautiful and accessible way. When you say Ghazali, it's really a one-stop shop uh, for classical Islamic thought. And making that accessible for our children is uh, uh, an, a massive gift uh, that we can impart upon them. And it, uh, it, it's, it enriches families, it, it enriches children's lives. Well, there's nothing like the Ghazali's children's project. It's unique. It's uh, groundbreaking, and it's a treasure for our children. It's personally, it's changed my dynamic and my relationship with my children. It gives us a language to communicate, to talk through issues, uh, to frame uh, things that come up. Uh, as simple as uh, an argument, we, we now have a language to, to, to talk about what what's going on? Uh, because Ghazali himself speaks to uh, all ages. Uh, he had uh, an extremely broad readership, even in his own lifetime, and he knew it. And he had a great gift of communicating uh, the deepest truths to the layperson, to the theologian, and as proven by this wonderful new series, uh, to children. And so adults learn from it, parents learn from it, children learn from it, and uh, it's, it's absolutely transformative. Uh, often I'll come home after a long day of work and uh, spend uh, half an hour, 45 minutes, reading through uh, a chapter from the Ghazali series, and the kids get it, they understand it, they understand the, the message, they understand the work, the inner work that has to happen, and... Uh, through this series, I've, I've, uh, I've gained a, a language to talk about what's essential and important to me as a Muslim, to, uh, and, and to uh, the, the family uh, as uh, shared values. With the Ghazali series, I'm able to now talk with my children and uh, explain to them things that adults go through. There's a story in the Ghazali series about uh, each human being having uh, a good wolf and a bad wolf inside them. And if you feed the good wolf, that good wolf overcomes the bad one. And if you feed the bad wolf, that one overcomes the good wolf. And, and one day I, I must have woken up on the wrong side of the bed and uh, my daughter came up to me. And she's, she was four at the time and she said, Baba, I really didn't know until this morning that you have a bad wolf too. And I said, yes, I do. And what should I do about it? She said, you should lie down, uh, breathe deeply, go make you wudu. And then once your bad wolf is, is calm and your good wolf is, uh, has woken up, then you should come talk. Uh, and, and, and that was her, first of all, processing uh, her father having a bad day and it was her being able to articulate what to do about it and, and, and understanding that there's shared struggles that cut through uh, all the ages and that's thanks to the Ghazali series um, and without it it would have been very difficult for me to express uh, the complications of my day and for her to process uh, why I was uh, having uh, a big male adult tantrum. So thanks to Ghazali, um, I, I'm able to, to also remind myself and speak to uh, uh, my, my children um, in, in a real manner, in, in a manner. It's the tongue of fitra, it's the, the, the tongue of the primordial or the innate disposition of the human being that Ghazali is able to articulate uh, so wonderfully in his uh, series. I think it's important to remember that when we say Ghazali, we don't just mean a Persian 
uh, theologian and uh, a mystic who died in the 12th century uh, in 1111, who was from Tours. Uh, we, we mean the, the culmination of six centuries of Islamic thought. Ghazali builds upon and synthesizes and organizes and elaborates upon uh, a massive uh, tradition of Islamic thought, of uh, discourse on, on purification of the soul, on Islamic theology, a mastery of scripture, uh, in his monumental revival of the religious sciences. So really to know Ghazali well is to know the classical period of Islamic thought well. That's why he's so important is that uh, studying him is also a, a window into uh, a much broader world of, of Islamic thought. So it's not one individual, uh, really. It, it's, he builds his work on Abu Talib al-Makki and earlier scholars uh, and, and synthesizes it in a beautiful manner that was very accessible and reader-friendly and insightful, which is why it was so popular. There have been plenty of amazing authors and thinkers throughout Islamic thought, but it's his accessibility, his ability to organize, to taxonomize, to classify uh, different ideas uh, in such a beautiful, clear manner um, is, uh, is, is, is part of the wonder of, of uh, uh, the Ghazali uh, writings.